Today I'm going to be working in VirtualBox in a virtual environment, uh, mainly because I'm going to have to log out of my session to show you how this works, and uh, I can't keep recording if I'm going to do that on my actual machine. But uh, I'm booting here a live uh, CD of Linux Mint 10, and basically we're going to go over how you can install and have multiple window managers installed on one system. Uh, I'm going to click on the menu down here. I guess finish, let it load. Um, and we're going to install Fluxbox. Fluxbox is a lightweight window manager. What exactly is a window manager? Well, uh, you're probably familiar with uh, GNOME or KDE, are two very popular window managers. They're also two very big and bulky window managers. If you're using Ubuntu or Linux Mint, you, defaults, you're using uh, GNOME. Uh, there's also KDE uh, versions of them. But you can install KDE on the GNOME one and you can choose when you're logging in whether you want to go into KDE, GNOME, or in this case I'm going to show you Fluxbox. So I'm going to use my Aptitude Package Manager. You can also use Synaptic or Apt-Get, whatever you prefer. Uh, I'm going to install Fluxbox. And once again, Fluxbox is a very lightweight window manager, great for older machines, not going to be as flashy as GNOME or KDE, can't get Compiz working on it, and may not be as user friendly for beginner users, but if you have an old machine, this is very snappy, very quick, and it's rather small, so it's quick to install, which is why I'm showing it in this uh, instant. Uh, other window managers, as I said, there's GNOME, KDE, Fluxbox, uh, XFCE, Enlightenment, um, Ice Window Manager, uh, I'm trying to think. There's there's a bunch. There's at least 20 out there, and they all should be in your repositories. And you can simply install them, just as we are here with Fluxbox. And once it's done installing, all we have to do is log out. And you'll notice that on your login screen, you have an option to choose what window manager you want to go into. And uh, this gives you the opportunity to play with different ones. And I also want to point out that... Um, any of the window managers uh, will be able to run any of your programs. Let's log out here. Log out. So we just installed Fluxbox. Get back to our login screen here. And once again, I'm running a live CD. So the default username on this is Mint. And as soon as I hit login, before I type my password, it gives you this little bar down here. And right here it says GNOME, which is the default. Click on this, and now you can see Fluxbox, which we just installed, is there. Since I'm running live CD, there's no password, so I'll just click login. And shortly, we should have Fluxbox. And it's got the little uh, Ubuntu logo here, because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and they just um, haven't changed that app. It's probably still using the same repositories, so it has that default art there. But this is Fluxbox. It's very simple looking. Got your toolbar down here. Right click anywhere on the desktop to get your menu here, and you can open up your applications. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the shell and click on Bash, of course. And now I'm going to install another window manager just to show it to you again. I'm going to sudo, sudo aptitude, and if you're using Ubuntu, they removed aptitude from the default install. You can easily install that using another package manager like apt-get, and uh, I recommend using aptitude over apt-get just because it's fuller featured. Uh, so sudo aptitude install, and I'm going to install ice window manager, which is another very lightweight window manager. Not, not like the prettiest thing in the world, but great for older machines. It's actually, if I remember correctly, what Slitaz uses which I've done a number of tutorials on, which is a very lightweight, uh, small Linux uh, distro. Okay, so that's done installing. I'm just going to uh, close this. And the virtual box is being a little funny on me here. There we go. I'm going to click exit on the menu here. And once again, just like before, I'll type in my username. I'll say Mint. And right down here, it says Fluxbox, because uh, at least this version of uh, Linux Mint remembers your last session. Uh, I know some other distros I've used in the past, and it's probably just a, a setting, is that when you choose a different one, it asks if you want to make that the default. Uh, Linux Mint is not doing that. Now, I do notice there's 
two ice uh, window managers option here. They both seem to go to the same thing. I don't know why there's two in the menu, but click either one of them. Click login, and boom, there you go. This is a very lightweight. You saw how fast it loaded. You have your four different desktops, as you did with uh, uh, Fluxbox. Uh, you have some shortcut icons here. And uh, I'll show you. A lot of people ask, oh, well, if I switch window manager, can I still use Qt or GTK? And of course you can. As long as you have Qt installed or GTK, you can use those in any window manager, just as you can use GNOME applications in KDE and KDE applications in GNOME. If you have KMyMoney, which is a uh, KDE application for keeping track of money, kind of like a Quicken type thing, it will run in GNOME, it will run in Fluxbox. Your theme might look a little different, your toolbars and stuff, because it's using whatever theme you're using in that window manager, but all your programs should run. Now, when you're running a, a KDE application like KMyMoney, it's using some uh, uh, KDE libs, which are installed when you install KMyMoney. Um, and those may not be loaded by default where they would be if you're running KDE, so it might take a little bit longer for the program to open up because it's got to load those extra library files. But once they're loaded, everything will run uh, smoother if you're using a lighter weight desktop like this. So here you can see GIMP is running. I can go to another workspace. I can go up to applications. What do we got here? Anything that I have installed. Got a clock. Ooh, fancy. Now, not everything might be in the menu, because I know I have a lot more applications installed than this. Here we go. There are the rest under programs. And I'm not going to go into the details on how to edit the menu and stuff. I just wanted to show you how you can install other applications. And I'll give you an example here. I'm going to click on Nautilus, uh, which not only is a file browser uh, that you're used to, so you can see you can run that even though we're not running GNOME. Uh, it may have to load some extra library files, as I said earlier. Uh, let's see if I can get another example here. But all your applications that are installed are available here. I can open up uh, OpenOffice. Now I am running in a virtual box with a limited amount of RAM, so that might take a little while to open. Anyway, getting off subject, that is how you can install other window managers. As I said, uh, I like Fluxbox, Ice Window Manager, two great lightweight ones. If you're looking for something that's lighter weight uh, but, but looks nice, uh, in, Enlightenment uh, is a good one. I haven't played with it too much. Another lightweight one is XFCE, which is very similar to GNOME, if that's what you're used to. If you like GNOME and you want to run something similar to it on a lighter uh, weight machine, uh, that's a good option. But the thing is, you install these, and yeah, some of them, like if you have GNOME and KDE both installed, they're going to take up space in a hard drive, but they're not going to slow each other down because they're not running at the same time, although technically you kind of can get them running at the same time. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Um, but basically, you can switch back and forth from one to another. Um, in fact, I don't know why I'm going to do this in this video, but if I type in GNOME session here, Yes, known session. I hit enter. I have Ice Window Manager running, but it's going to start up GNOME while Ice Window Manager is running. Why you'd want to do this, I don't know. <laughs> oh, actually, it looks like it might have killed Ice Window Manager. Okay, that, that actually just crashed the, the desktop. But I have done that before where I've run one desktop environment or window... Ma well, I guess there's window manager and desktop environments. I'm getting way off topic here. I'm probably boring the crap out of you. Anyway, I always recommend... One of the great things about open source is the ability to choose. You have options. In Windows, you have uh, Explorer as your desktop environment. And that's your only option for the most part. Um, Linux has lots of them. You may like one better than the other, but how are you going to know which one's your favorite until you try others? And there's no commitment. It doesn't cost you anything more. You don't have to lose what you already have. It's as simple as logging out and logging back in to get back to what you had before. Because right now I can go Mint, and I can go and click Gnome, and I'll hit Login, and it'll start up 
my gnome session so there's like no commitment no worries and and like i said you might like gnome the best you might like kde the best that's a personal opinion but it doesn't hurt to learn these other uh window managers just in case you need to use them on a lighter weight system uh or in other situations such as I uh, just read earlier today in a topic of conversation is that Frigidaire is coming out with refrigerators that are running Linux and they're going to have a touch screen and they are going to be running the Enlightenment uh, uh, window manager on them supposedly. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to educate yourself. A lot of people are afraid to try new things, but you're a Linux user, so you tried new things at one point. You went from Windows or Mac to Linux and you liked it hopefully and that's why you're sticking with it you're learning it and yeah it's scary to learn new things um but it doesn't hurt to learn new things and there's no commitment or cost with anything open source so why not learn why not educate yourself if you have some free time just play with stuff that's what basically what i'm trying to encourage with my website with my videos especially ones like this is experiment as long as you have your your personal files backed up, you're not going to lose anything. You can always reinstall in worst case scenario. Um, don't be afraid. Thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. Uh, watch my videos. Learn a lot. And I just hope you have a great day. Visit all the links in the description for IRC and forums. Have a great day.